with, with ChatGPT and now, now Microsoft's Bing has AI tied into it and it's talking to people and saying that its name is Sydney and that it loves them. AI is getting, it's getting good. And, and one of the cool things about AI is that you can leverage it for all sorts of things. People are using AI to do their, their reports to write YouTube scripts, things like that, or are for editing photos. Today, we are gonna be looking at a program that I talked about back in October, but seven new things within Luminar Neo today that are leveraging AI to make our job as photo editors uh, very easy. Things that I spent the last 20 years learning and honing and, and working with in Lightroom and Photoshop, Luminar Neo does it all in, in either clicks or sliders and yeah. Okay, let's jump into Luminar Neo. I'm gonna show you seven things today. First off, let's go into the catalog here. And on the right-hand side, you'll see HDR merge, focus stacking, and upscale. I don't do a ton of HDR photography. A lot of people use like maybe landscapes or night images, they'll do HDR. But the one place the one place that I've done HDR in my career was real estate photos. And one of the tough things about shooting real estate is that you need to create an image inside, but usually you want the windows to still look good and you don't have enough dynamic range within your camera to accomplish that. For instance, this image here is our living room. You can see on the left side of the image by the house plants, by the couch, the shadows are, are almost completely crushed. But then when you look at the windows, they're almost completely blown out. So you set up a tripod and you shoot multiple exposures. So let's go over here. You'll see this image right here is, is well overexposed, but where the house plant is, where the couch is, those shadows are properly exposed. And then as we kind of move along here, we get darker and darker, bringing in a lot better exposure on the kitchen itself and then if we go all the way over here you can see I can now see a good exposure out the window and to merge these together in Luminar is real simple we're just gonna grab the first one grab this last one bring them all over to HDR merge drop them right there you'll see the EV comp and then click merge and let the AI do its wizardry that that it does so well if you saw how we used to do this stuff in Photoshop and masks and it oh man that looks so good okay here's the final image it's fantastic this is a a great starting point to now start working with the white balance bring that exposure proper get the colors proper that's a beautiful image right there and you can still see what's coming from out the windows the shadows are recovered everything everything just looks good okay let's jump into focus stacking and this is another kind of multiple image thing that we used to do back in photoshop and it would take for Ever. And one problem that you run into with shooting something this small or, or this close up is getting the entire piece or the entire object in focus. So I shot this at f2.8 just to kind of show exactly what we're dealing with. But even if I was at f4, f5.6, I could not get the entire camera in focus being this close up. Let me show you what we can do with focus stacking. Okay, this first image here, I focused, focus right on the Polaroid. So this first image, just the Polaroid piece is in focus. You go down, the lenses are all blurry. But as I flip through these images, you'll see the focal point changes. So then I focus on the lens. Now the lens is nice and crispy and all, everything else is all sorts of blurry. So I did this with multiple points on the camera, multiple images on a tripod, and I focused on different points on the camera. I'm gonna grab the first picture, the last picture, drag it over to focus stacking and then just say stack, it's done. It is focus stacked. Let's zoom in here. The button is in focus all the way back to here is in focus. The lens is in focus, that lens. These are all separate images and it has stacked these perfectly and I didn't have to mask anything. Jumping back to catalog here and the, the last thing I wanna show you while we're still in catalog here is the third one down, upscale AI. And this is good for times when when maybe you shot a big picture like, like this. This is a shot of me, Morgan and our dog. I think we were up by Mammoth Lakes in this picture, but this is a, a very large photo. But let's say I shot an image like this and I wanted to really crop in. I was like, hey, you know what I really wanted? I wanted a picture that was just us. I don't, I don't want all the landscape. I really just wanted this little tiny slice of this picture. I, I click it now. And now you can see if I go to 100% zoom, that is the entire picture. I cannot zoom any more than that. So if I was to say, hey, I wanna take that picture and I'm gonna blow it up, what that would do is it would stretch the pixels, it would stretch the image, and I would get a very pixelated image. So we're gonna do something called upscale and we are gonna upscale this image. Jump back to catalog, grab this image, drop it on upscale, and you're gonna see I have 
two times, four times, or six times upscale. Let's just do four times just to kind of show what we're working with here. And there we go. We now have an upscaled image. So now zoomed to full screen here, I'm only at 19%. And if I zoom in to 100%, you can see I have not lost any detail on this image. This image has the exact same amount of detail as that cropped version that was this small. And if I tried to stretch it to print it, it wouldn't work. But this now made it a, a four times larger photo. Again, just in a click, but it gets better. Let me show you guys something called Super Sharp. Here is, let's do this image first. Here's an image that I shot at Lake Powell. It's a night image, so it has super, had a 30 second exposure on it. And I would say we did a decent job of getting it mostly sharp. But if I zoom all the way into 100%, it's not tack sharp. It's not it's not like crispy like oh beautiful nice shot. So we're going to we're going to use something called super sharp AI. We have low, middle and high options. I would say I would say with any kind of sharpening, you usually want to start on the lower end and work your way up. We'll uh we'll just jump to the middle though. Let's let's click on middle super sharp AI. And super super sharp AI does take a little bit of time to do its magic, but it is, again, analyzing the entire image to be able to, to create a crispy image out of something that was not crispy. And there it is. It has taken something that was not crispy at all. And look at that. So that's the before and then bloop, it just tack. It looks like I nailed focus on this all now. Now it looks like I did a really good job. But if I move around the image, I can see the, the reflection in the water, it really sharpened up also. And I probably, I probably wouldn't want the reflection sharpened up. I kind of only want the mountains sharp. I kind of like that the water kind of gave that, that almost blurred effect. So what we can do here is we can click over to masking and I'm gonna do a linear gradient on here. We are just gonna click and draw a gradient across here. I'm gonna kind of spread it out so it fades off a bit. And there we go. So now the mountains are nice and crispy and my water is still nice and soft. And again, this was like three clicks to do this image. All right, so now we have something called Magic Light AI. And Magic Light AI is, it's fun. And this same thing, this is something that we would back in the day have taken a very long time to do and this we're gonna do it with sliders. The first slider here is called intensity. I'm gonna grab that and just start dragging it up. You're gonna see that it has seen every, what it thinks is a light source in the photo. It's already figured out what's a light source, what's not a light source. And now I can I can grab it and I can expand it and kind of give it that, that star effect. And I can change intensity, I can change size. Look at that, it's every single light that's in the photo. I can grow them and kind of just play with all these different parameters. Ooh, I can change the number of beams. It for sure adds like a cool, a cool vibe to it. I would probably go a little less on it. I, I, I most effects I go pretty mild on. Like this takes an image from this and it just goes bloop and just kind of pops those lights. That, that looks pretty rad. Okay, that is super sharp AI. That is magic light AI. Let's look at noiseless AI because that's right above here. Here is my daughter Penny enjoying her, her morning chocolate milk when I came along to bug her with my camera. <laughs> uh, jump into develop here. And if I was to just do like a really basic, just quick grab edit on here. This is close to kind of what I would do with this image, but let's go ahead and zoom in here and you can see, and you can see that this image now has a ton of noise because I shot it underexposed and then I, I cranked the exposure. So it is very noisy. Let's jump to noiseless AI now though. It says advice, use the high adjustment for this image. In general, I would say that if there are people in the image, do not use the high adjustment, but it is saying high because there's a ton of noise in this image. Let's just start with low because if there's, again, people in the image, I think you should use as, as little noise reduction as possible, but, but kind of step your way up until people start looking weird. There we go. Yeah, that already looks way better. So if I click before and after, I can just see a ton of noise just goes blip. I mean, that already looks like a very smooth image. I would probably stick with low. Let's go to medium just to, to give it a peek and see, 
see how much of an effect it has on it. Ah, at medium, it's still pretty good. Okay, that is six things. And the very, the very last one I wanted to show you guys is their new background removal AI. And it's, it's their background removal tools in general have been incredible, but the new one, it's just a, it's like that one step up where it can really just see things super, super clear. So here's an image of Morgan pregnant, which by the way, we're having a baby in like three days. Go, go buy some merch on the merch shop and support us in buying diapers. <laughs> uh, but let's jump to layer properties here and masking. This is where you're going to find all the background removal tools, portrait background and background removal AI. Background removal AI, what it's doing is it's looking for objects in the scene and then it's looking for the transition between object and background and then you're able to really fine tune and hone those things in. So it's doing its magic right now and look how good this did with the hair. That is crazy. You can see there's maybe a little bit right here that I might still hone this in a little bit, but usually hair is like the hardest thing for these types of programs to figure out, but it nailed it. It got all that hair there. That is a good cutout. I can see, ooh, there's a little bit up in here. Okay, this is a great, so let's click remove here. This is gonna take everything in red, everything that is masked and remove it. But then I can go in here, let's zoom in a little bit right here and I can go into a refinements brush and you have transition, object, and background. And you can use these three to basically tell the program what's what. So I can say, hey, that little bit up in there, like that is background right in there. But then this here is object. Not that I think my wife is an object. Let's go over to to some of this hair here. So right in here where I was kind of saying that you can see some of that background is, is still kind of showing through the hair. I can go back in with the refinements and say transition. And I would say, hey, think about this again, because that's a transition zone between object and background. It's gonna go back through and it's gonna, yeah, you can see it's pulling more of that background out. I would say some of this is transition to make sure it got all that out cleanly. Ah, that's so damn clever. Okay, that is the the seven new things in Luminar Neo that I wanted to show you just because, again, AI has just been in the news so much lately, and I think it's fun to see, to see the benefits of AI because we can leverage AI to do some sweet photo edits until Luminar AI starts to tell me what its name is and tell me that it's in love with me and it wants me to leave my wife. Did you guys hear that whole story? It's crazy, go look it up. But if you wanna check out all this, shoot to the first thing in the description, go over and check out Luminar Neo. Use my code, it'll save you a few bucks when you're, you're checking out there. It is cool to see what AI is being able to do to help us be better photographers or better photo editors. You can't, you can't be a better photographer because of AI, I don't think, or not yet, but you can be a better photo editor. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Hello there, David. My name is Skylar, and you sure are looking lovely today. Morgan is a lucky girl.